right, we're back at Classic Car Club Manhattan, and we are talking about the Porsche 911 GT3, perhaps the best performance car in the world. Ooh. And we have Mike Pricinello and Zach Mosley from CCC, Classic Car Club Manhattan. It's After Drive. Want me to do a third? No, 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 no. no. See, we do, I only I did think, two. Remember, think, what, remember yeah, yeah. last time we were here, I did like seven? I think when you keep it, when, when we keep it going, we're good. Yeah, exactly. We're the Porsche 911 GT3 has always been the product of a simple formula, a harder edge 911 that calls on a driver's own skills to maximize its potential. Its engine, a high revving, naturally aspirated and race proven build of Porsche's legendary flat six. The first GT3 arrived in 1999 with a 3.6 liter, producing 355 horsepower. That engine descended from the one Hans Metzger designed for the 1998 Porsche GT1 race car. The next GT3 got electronic dampers and a similar Metzger engine, producing 415 horsepower. A 4-liter, 500-horsepower version arrived late in the product cycle. For 2014, the GT3 underwent a top-to-bottom redesign, starting with the engine, a new 3.8-liter flat six with direct injection, 475 horsepower, and a redline at 9,000 RPM. Add to that a whole bunch of new technologies, including rear steering and a high-performance calibration of Porsche's PDK transmission instead of a manual, and you get the 2014 Porsche 911 GT3. For us, it's like a metaphor of automotive technology being used for performance gains. Right. That's kind of a running theme with the stuff that we talk about here, is you know, stripped-down cars versus cars with the highest level of technology involved. You know which is better, we'll never resolve that, but you know, we're gonna always talk about it, and. Um, I think there's a good chance we might resolve it right here and now. Really? <laughs> we have very okay. strong opinions. Good deal. Undeniably loaded with technology, Yeah. but it's probably the first example that really lets that all go in the background, and you still feel like it's a pure driver's car without technology. Okay, so, so now we can go home because that was kind yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we didn't no, no, but you're right. That, that's they're, they're, that's they're, where they're, we're going. But, wait, what, but what, I would say, to, I would say the GT3 is. I, I personally, my all-time favorite car. So, and, and I've been very privileged to drive a lot of things. Right. To me, a GT3 is a stripped-out supercar. I'll say. Mm. Um, you know, it hangs with Ferraris and McLarens and everything else in the room. But to me, a GT3 is a much more simpler beast. Right. Um, that achieves the same level of performance through engineering rather than technology. This one is mechanical bit, engineering versus like, versus you know like the the McLaren for instance is still like brimming with technology and the, you know the Ferraris they all have that I've always thought of anyway my own personal view of a GT3 is a bit more simple um, this one is a departure from that but I think to like what Zach says is it still feels very um, simple because it does a good job of putting the technology in the background yeah, but it you, has a ton you, of yeah, it. Well, you, know, you, you don't you don't have a dial that brings up different modes that are programmable and stuff so like you have a exhaust button you have a traction control button you have a uh, suspension button. Right. That's yeah, it. You know, and there's like, but there's, there's a lot of stuff working underneath. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's working underneath, but it doesn't feel like it's interfering all the time. It does feel yeah. very direct and. All right, but still, the question yeah. remains: What is a GT3 in the Porsche 911 line? Right. That's I mean, it's a basic question. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's actually kind of weird, it, right? Because a turbo is way more expensive and a right. bit more covetable to most people. I think a GT3 is for the guy that or gal that just wants the most pure sports car driving experience. Rear wheel drive, heavy amount of horsepower. Um, you know, it has the revs, it has all the unobtainium in the engine, which makes it fuck, bolt, up the, bolt up the rev range and everything. But yeah. I think it's for the driver amongst 911 drivers. Yeah. Right, and it, and it still leaves a little bit of room for like an RS model yeah. with that's a little bit more harder edged and a little bit more maybe you know, a, a little bit more percentage of the time yeah. on track than those are irrelevant to me, per, just personally, because yeah. that's enough. Like, I, right. you know, yeah. you still get some scaffolding in the back seat and stuff yeah, like and that. Yeah, it, it, it does <laughs> enter this confused area because you kind of think it's supposed to be the best sports car in the world, but it's definitely at a level it's competing with the supercars, and the the supercars are yeah. like allowed to have all these kind of ridiculous excuses that you know a pure sports car shouldn't have <laughs> right so when, when, you're, when you're in that territory you're like well what's really going on here what, what, what is it yeah i mean I, I, to me the 997 gt3 was sort of the, the high water mark for sports cars in the modern age right yeah. because it had the it had great steering feel it it was it just had all those things that make a modern 911 really a good car but all it's, of the things that we, we would want to be a little bit more up in the mix, like the, the steering feel. Yeah, and, it's and like a 911, it's like a GT3 is the uh, sort of amplified, condensed version of a 911. Got it. 
that to me, I guess, you know, you, great 911, great car, but if you want like the race car version of it almost for the street, you'd right. it's a GT3. But then the 991 comes out, right? Yeah. And nine, the 911, probably the biggest update that they've done in a really long time. Yes. And then obviously we finally got the GT3 version. Mm -hmm. Now, the technology level has been upped, right? There's, there are all kinds of stuff in this that weren't in the 997. I think, I mean, depends on how you measure it. It's probably more technological than anything else in here now. Uh, in, the, you know, well, in a way, yeah. The rear steering, steering the that. PDK, the electric steering, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff. Well, okay, so, you know, one big thing with the engine, right, was you know, this is obviously the Porsche nerd moment, right? Because the, the old Metzger GT1 engine architecture is out, right? right. Race proven, kind of a little bit more complex, but... Um, for the new hotter, more combustible version. Right? <laughs> for the new, whatever, 9A1, 9A, you yeah. know, whatever, the, the, the post Metzger right. engine, which um, is, to my knowledge, a little bit less complex in terms of architecture. Um, but it also has, uh, you know, direct injection now, yeah. and um, it's a little bit, it's probably cheaper to build, maybe, it's, very light. You know, it's a little bit lighter. But Porsche seems to feel that it's up to the standards that the Metzger engine set. Not actually knowing all the Metzger Porsche nerd stuff, right. I would say, yeah, the engine's amazing. It's, it's more than you could ever use. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, it is. So, Rents to 9,000 yeah. RPM. I, I mean, mean, it is, yeah. it's full on. I, I mean, I think with all the technology stuff there and you know, the driving fuel, there, there's, there's been a constant debate in the car club since we got this car. Right. And, and I think I can kind of, if I take you through my experience driving it, I can kind of get us there. So cool. When, I first, when we first picked up the car, I was an hour late and I was supposed to get back in time for a call and whatever. So I got there and just said, sorry guys, I'm just going to get in the car. And, on a conference call so literally five minutes after seeing it I was in the car out the door programming bluetooth and like getting on a call that was the first downfall for me of it because every other gt3 was like <laughs> it, it, it was like a, a surgical weapon like something yeah. that could could do a lot in you know in in capable hands but if you picked it up the wrong way you'd kill yourself right and uh I shouldn't have been able to get into a GT3 and get on a conference call and be relaxed and whatever and do that. That is a but, new thing. But you know, with PDK and all that, it was possible. And, it even and, has navigation in it. Yeah. Well, our old one had navigation. Did it? We'd I guess it did. Well, PDK is, yeah. is, is all right. So I mean, we're gonna right. we, we should probably cut right to the tension in the room, which is that G, the GT3 yeah. was sort of the last great manual. Yeah. 911, right? Yeah, well, so now it's only available in PDK. Yeah, PDK. I mean, the, the thing is, I, you know, I'm the diehard, like, classic car guy here that likes to do everything super agricultural. Mm -hmm. And I'll say the speeds that this thing is capable of, you're really pleased to not have to busy yourself with changing gears, you yeah. know? As, I, as, as far as PDK goes, I think it's a very good version of it. Yeah. I don't really like the PDK gearbox too much, you know, the 911s. Yeah. I don't know, it's just... I, I think in, w without a ballistic missile behind it, you know, you, uh, it becomes a bit sterile. But in this car, it's so fast and so violent that the PDK is still very, very exciting, you know? So I drove a lot. I drove it a lot. I agree. I, like, I like the way that the PDK is heavy. I mean, that gear shift is instantaneous. It gives you a good womp, boom, like a Formula One sound. All of that's great. I still do, like I, I miss the, that manual, and I agree that it is so fast that, it, you know, when I took it and I sort of drove it to really give it a good review, I mean, I was steaming into corners. I was really thinking, like, I'm glad I don't have to worry about blip shifting and everything right now. There's enough to just sort of yeah. steer this car. It's a little video gamey. Mm -hmm. It's a little too perfect. I don't know. Well, it's, it's interesting because that's the key to all this. Is the technology making for a better experience or is it... It's, in, in this yeah. car, it's keeping you alive. And I yeah, think right. being alive is a better experience. Well, yeah, okay. The, yeah. and, it, and, and for me, like, again, the, so the, the next step in that, you know, I drove back and then I, you know, got off the call and even traffic, I could say, well, this car is, you know, it's, it's dynamic enough and it's connected enough. It's a real driver's car. You can have fun even screwing around in traffic. Right. And then we went and filmed a piece on it, but we were still in the break-in miles and we were sort of at the end of the break-in miles. So we didn't hold ourselves right to 4,500 RPM, but we were kind of licking 6,500 RPM, um, driving around Bear Mountain, and a great time. I mean, and that, when, you're, when you're doing that and not pushing it to the red line, it's all about finesse. And like, I get out of the car then and said, 
best road car ever, like the wow. best powerful road car I've ever driven. But then today, I finally went and drove it, be able to rev it to 8,000 RPM. This is where, or 9,000, yeah. where the big thing comes in because I really enjoyed that experience when I was limited. And now that I've gone out and seen what it does at 9,000 RPM, and it's a whole different car. I mean, it's just like this whole level of insanity that is tempting, but you can't, you're only gonna be able to get a glimpse of that you know, for 1% of the time you drive the car, and the rest of the time, now you feel like you're wasting it. Really what that's saying is that Porsche is trying to make almost all of their cars a car that can do almost everything, where you can drive it every day, or you could have it for the weekends only. Because in, you know, in the old days, you would have a GT3, but it would be for the weekends, and you wouldn't necessarily drive it during the week. I mean, you could. Track day guys. Right, you. exactly. I, you know, I'll tell you, th this is my thing with this car. If, if, if we were to compare it to the other sort of supercars in the room, 458 and uh, the McLaren or, or all of those sorts of cars, um, you know, they, they're operating at a very high level. And I would say in most cases, including my case, the car's ability is higher than my own driving ability. I consider myself a good driver, but I have not strung out a 458 Italia Ferrari to its limit mm -hmm. it's on the road, you know. But there are moments when they give you a sense of what they're capable of. You know, you sort of fly down the West Side Highway, you go upstate and you go, wow, that was amazing. Like, I can see what this car is capable of. I got a little bit of a taste of it and I got it in every corner. And it's, and it's interesting. This car is on such, my point of view, is on such a higher performance level. It's very German and very serious and it's made for the greatest lap time that I, in, in my driving area, this is the first car I've never really got the sense of it. I never, it never, it's, it's fully um, impressive but I've never had the wow moment because the whole time I was driving it, I was, it, it was like being on a wild horse and just like, whoa, just always trying to like pull the reins back a little bit. I was trying to keep that from happening because in first gear, like whoomp, it's 9,000 and whoomp, and you, you know, you're well into three digits. You're nowhere near its, its threshold. I mean, it's gripping the whole time. It's completely composed to the point of like, yeah, I see I, I'm waiting for too so, much. It's too much. And, yeah. I, and I, you know, and I, and I debated this with Zach a lot and, and he sent me a video of the guy who's in charge of the GT3 program mm -hmm. in Germany. I don't remember his name, but they did this little video with him and it was, and he says, you know, I like to take my GT3 out in the morning before the cars got, I right. said, that makes sense to me. I did the same thing. I woke up like at five in the morning and blasted around in it. And then they showed that he lives in like the German countryside. <laughs> right. He lives, you know, a couple of miles from the, from the Autobahn system. And so like this car, is made for that guy. And for him, it must be the most surreal thing ever. You obviously aren't a professional race car driver, mm -hmm. so and, you, and you, you don't, don't have slicks that are gonna let go in, you know, in a, as a cliff face you know, traction moment. Mm -hmm. You're going to have street tires that are sort of more progressive. You're gonna have things like the rear steer. You're gonna can, have the yeah. um, Can, I, can I say though, yeah, the, the Michelins on this car are great. I think every supercar now or car this level comes with Pirellis. Right. I love the tires on that car. Before I knew what it was capable of at, at seven or 8,000 RPM, I thought I was kind of dipping into its character and I really, really enjoyed that. Now that I've seen a glimpse of what its character really is, no, I'm never really gonna touch that. It kind of ruined the beauty of the three quarters experience for me, you know? So, so it's like, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I would love this chassis and, and I don't know, less we, power that makes more noise at lower RPM. I don't and know. manual we, transmission. Yeah, yeah. We've we put a lot of miles on a We need, we need an out. RS Classic. It's basically a GT3 Yeah. Wait a minute. Chassis. So we were supposed to come in here and say, this is finally the car that brings technology together with driving experience. You know, I, it, I, I and, think and it, it does. Is that. I think it, it is that. It's just, but does it? Because what you've been saying Well, is I'm, judge, the, I'm judging myself at this point, right? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm, I'm not Hurley Haywood. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a better driver than most well, and, people and, I know, but you know, this is and, man, and, and, this, and, this is and, way above And we're, we're limited yeah. by public roads and some yeah. sense of responsibility. Like right. yeah. any time I attempted to look into the higher RPM, I was I was, I was Dude, like kind of, it just made me feel sick. Like, yeah. I, was like, I was like, I'm gonna do 120 miles an hour in three seconds here, and then. And so what? And, and then there's traffic ahead, there could be a cop and a deer jumping on the road. So like, yeah. like it just wasn't You know, You know what it is, too when, fast. When, you drive, <laughs> when you drive other sports cars the way that we like to drive them, so I would much prefer to drive a Cayman on the road than this, because you can take that corner at seven tenths of what the car is capable of, or six tenths or something like that, and have, and, and you want to approach the edge of, of your driving environment, not maybe the car or not maybe your talent, but the driving environment. Right. 
I, I can't find an environment where I can get nearly half of what yeah. this car is capable and, and, of. And the big difference, and the, the, he's been saying this for weeks, but I finally got it this morning when I drove it, is that the, a Cayman would reveal its character at a much lower limit, where this doesn't reveal its true character yeah. until you are way beyond your ability and the limits of the road. Can we talk about what's good about it though? Yes, like absolutely. Fashion. I really do like it. First of all, I think it's wonderful looking and I like the wheels. Not that oh, any of that matters. It's, it's the best looking <laughs> the engine, 11 in a while. The engine is, from what I've driven of it so far, the engine is fantastic. I mean, it, it's, it has a very free feel. It revs straight up. It, it sounds like a satanic jackhammer. It doesn't, none of, nothing's like tuned to be beautiful about it. You know, Ferraris and stuff, that engine sounds great. It, this is just all purposeful, yeah. and you know I think maybe the best design is kind of simple in those ways. Um, really comfortable as a daily driver. I don't know if you can say that about a GT3 prior to this. The 997 was 997 pretty comfortable. Was I mean, the RS. That's push. why they, you build the RS, and all of yeah. a sudden now you have the harder edge thing. So I mean, that's what I always liked about yeah. the, the 997 GT3. Yeah. Was that it wasn't pu too punishing yeah. when you drove it on the street. I think the 993 was a car, as you said, that revealed its character at a kind of lower threshold Yeah. also. So this car- And the 996. And the 996, 996 too. GT3? Very, oh, oh, kill yourself But really we're fast. at a performance level yeah. That's, yeah. that's, you know, a step higher. Yeah. And so without the new technologies that this has, the average buyer of this car isn't going to be able to get near not only the feeling, but the actual performance level. Right. I also think they'd buy it and love it. And they'd buy it and love it anyway. Yeah. The I grip, mean, I'll, the grip I'll, is I'll, great. I'll stick with my original comment. It is the best road car I've driven. Like, yeah. best pure driver's car at a high performance level I've ever driven. The, the, the problem is it's, it's only limited by my talent in the roads I've driven. Okay, but yeah. why? <laughs> why? Why exactly, though? Because, we, because we've just because, basically because said. Because there's this whole level of evil character at the top end of it that I, I yeah, you know, I, I kind of made myself sick trying to get there. I don't. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think the technology in this car will save you. It's not there to save you. Like in a lot of cars, it is. You know, this one it's not. I mean, you will, you will. It's a widowmaker, I think, if you push it on roads like this or on a track yeah. or anywhere. I mean, it's just it's punching high. I mean, if I get if I move to the Bavarian woods and I get a bit more talent, then right. yeah, it might be my only car. Well, so okay, so what we <laughs> we could say that it is a car that not only demands talent despite the level of for sort of saving technology, sort of yeah. driver assistance technology. Um, but it's maybe a car that could sort of get you to the next level of talent, perhaps? Yeah, I, I think what it, it's, it's like buying a horse or a plane or something like that. You need to have the right bit of property to right. really appreciate it. I think that's sort of where we've come down on it. A plane, so like yeah. the, the surgeon killers of old, right? I mean, yeah, there was always know, like the guys stories of the guys South that buy the Dakota twin engine. that have like the barn and, the, and they have like a, and have a dirt runway in their backyard. Right, it's right. Amazing. But there were always the guys that bought the twin engine, you know, Beechcraft that you yeah. know just really was wasn't a pilot enough for the plane. Yeah. Is this that kind of car? Oh, I, th I think that there are plenty of drivers out there who are better than me. There's there's thousands of people who could probably extract everything that this car could give you. I, again, I just think. Really consider where you live before you buy it. What are the roads like around you? How well do you know the local police? I came in here thinking we were going to say, well, it's the harder edge. It um, is. The more drivers, the, the drivers 911, now that the 911 is sort of it becoming makes, more of a GT feel. It makes me wish I live in Europe. This makes car, you wish you lived yeah. in Europe. Proud yeah. American. Wish I lived in Europe so I could experience yeah, this and, car. And it, There's just a bit of a more, a more relaxed drive. I think in Europe, you know, you can, you can hit major highways and a little faster. The roads are a bit more dynamic in some places. They're not lined with, you know. Yeah, yeah. And there's yeah, other and, places and, and, in America. And I, and I would say within the environment we live in, I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the Cayman GT4, you know? Yeah, I, 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 know. I, dro I drove a Cayman R for the first time last week um, with PDK. And the first time I drove it, it was just around the city. I'm like, ah, you know, why would you buy this in PDK? Yeah. But then I drove it to, you know, somewhere out in Jersey where I could actually stretch it out. And when you get it going, you could hear the engine come through and it made it a lot more exciting, even the PDK. Right. And I was like, this is great. You feel everything about the car. It's light. You feel its lightness in every movement. And you feel, it feels accessible. Like you can actually dig into it a bit within yeah. your limits on yeah. public roads and it's fun. Steering. 
I think it's still the, electric, right? Yeah, so it's yeah, I, I, same I, exact gear as the yeah. um, as the the Carrera base. Yeah, car. which, which I'm know? I'm like a non-believer in electric steering being a problem, you know, because the thing is, you, I think everyone's imagining that this is like drive-by wire, and we have a video game steering wheel with some servo in the front of the car. Yeah, but you still have a mechanical connection to the rack. It's just an electric motor turning right. the assist. And the great news is that's infinitely like tunable. Organic and connection to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. so I mean, this is obviously it's in the, it's a calibration exercise. Yeah. So this is calibrated, you know, in much. It's it's all software updates from yeah. where the 911. Yeah. And now, now that they figured that out, they should apply that formula to every sports car ever. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know? as electric steering goes, this is great because they are they spent a lot of time on calibration. Yeah. And and an engineer told me about. I mean, basically. It's, there's so many parameters that you can tweak. They haven't mm. really tapped into all of them yet. I mean, you where, know, what you, you can do with electric steering. I might, yeah. be a, I might be subject to too many reviews and it affecting my brain, but we have a lot of generations of 911s. We've always had them. And there's something about the earlier generations, you know, it's a little heavy, and then you get on the gas out of the corner and you can feel it like just whoop, lighten right up because yeah. the weight really does go to the back of the car. And you can almost, I, I drive a 74 911, that's sort of my, my daily, and you can feel how fast you're going by how light the wheel is. And, sure. And it's not to say that this car doesn't, isn't good, but you don't, the steering isn't good, but you don't, you don't get that same sort of a feel, but I'm also comparing this stuff that's 30 years old. Which yeah, is, well they haven't gotten, you yeah. know. But I do feel like it is very, it's very good, and, and it has a nice feel to it. I'm, I'm with Zach, I think it's good. Um, engine, it's basically the new, the new architecture, but, you know, less awesome. friction. They've, they've done all kinds of stuff with yeah, it. Now and that it doesn't light itself on fire, that engine, I think it's, yeah, it's great. 9,000 yeah. red line. Yeah, and, yeah. The, and the torque curve is awesome. I mean, you, yeah. know, you hit max torque at like 5,000 or 5,500 RPM, yeah. it's flat, it's really good. He was getting um, wheel, naturally wheel aspirated. spin in multiple gears. Power coming wheel spin in torque, multiple yeah. gears, yeah. yeah. See. Um, naturally aspirated, of course. It's it's a great sounding and a great um, performing engine. But you Sound, were you were saying hellish. about the fire. So so just quickly because yeah, the fire out. issue. Yeah. So this one was delivered in February. Right. Yeah. But it sat at the port for uh, I don't know, six months until we could take delivery of it because they had to wait to build a motor and swap right. it. But what was the issue? Uh, there was a gear. Uh, no, a bolt that backed out of the crank or something. Yeah. And drop oil dig, on the header. Dig a hole oh. in the pan and. Sh shoot oil all over the motor and light yeah. it on fire. One dopey thing. Yeah. It's like the rite of passage for yeah. sports cars. Exactly. You know? yeah. In summation of the uh, Porsche GT3? In summation of the 991 2014 Porsche GT3, yes. everybody should buy one. <laughs> How and much are they, by the way? How much was this one? Uh, we, well, uh, first thing, if you, if you are going to buy one, get nothing in it. That's what a GT3 should be. This does not have the hydraulic lift in the front. It doesn't right. have Red chrono packs and, and all. <laughs> Lightweight, simple, what, 130? Thir like 132 is a 132. 132 is a to hell me, of a lot of I mean, car. look, you know, I yeah. can't afford it, but it sounds like a bargain. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you so, compare absolutely. it to a, a $280,000 oh, Ferrari. It's amazing. Yeah. By the way, it has 100 horsepower less than all of its competitors and right. still is faster. So buy one and accessorize it with a summer house or a country house <laughs> in Montana. And that's the right equation, I think. And that's yeah. it. Yeah. GT3. Cool. Yeah. Don't get the Chrono Pack. Get a, get, a, get a house in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the same price. Yeah, right? Yeah. Mike and Zach, Classic Car Club, um, After Drive. Thanks again for, uh, for coming on oh. as usual. Go ahead. By the way, I have really enjoyed the new Slash Drive. And I think, uh, uh, I think, yeah. I think everybody should, should subscribe Plus. as well. Yeah. Subscribe. I'm a subscriber. Subscribe. Good deal. There's yeah. going to be a lot of real, very cool stuff coming. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So there you go. All right. See you guys later. After drive. That's it.